Welcome back to the Band Guide, where we use Garage Band to create professional sounding music. I'm your band guy, Colin, and today is the ninth video in the Ultimate Garage Band Beginner's Guide. This video series is walking through everything you need to know from the very first time you open up Garage Band until you're exporting out your finished, mixed, and mastered song. In fact, we're actually going to be recording, mixing, and mastering a song throughout this series so you can see the entire process inside Garage Band. It's going to be awesome. That's coming up here really soon. In fact, today's the last video where we're going through a walkthrough of everything inside Garage Band. Today we are deep diving into the GarageBand amp because it is such a powerful tool. But if you haven't seen all the videos where we've gone through everything going on in GarageBand, be sure to go back and check those out. And in addition to all the video series, I've also put together a completely free guide called the Ultimate GarageBand Guide. This guide is walking through everything in the recording process, the gear you need, uh, how to record, how to mix, how to master, everything you can think of, all the shortcuts. Super, super helpful guide. It's completely free from link in the description below, so be sure to pick that up. But let's go and get into today's video where we're deep diving into the GarageBand amp. So the GarageBand amp, it's wild. When I first switched over from Pro Tools to Logic, the amps were one of the biggest things that I noticed that really made me go, wow, these are really, really powerful and important tools that we don't have access to built in stock in Pro Tools, which is like very expensive mixing, recording mixing software. And then I went and checked out GarageBand and saw that they have the exact same amps in GarageBand. My mind kind of exploded. That was that and the GarageBand drummer were the day that I decided, okay, I'm gonna start teaching this stuff because people need to know how powerful GarageBand is these days. So I'm, not, I'm very serious about this. This stuff is crazy. The fact that you have access to this for free inside GarageBand is wild. So what I wanna do first though is show you that when you pull up a guitar track uh, in GarageBand, you will have presets here, and these presets drastically change the sound of the amp. So as I flip through these, it's not just going to change the amp, you can see that the amp just changed, but it also changes all of these other facets going on here, the pedal board, what options are on the pedal board, if there's a pedal board at all, it will change the uh, EQ and the compressor and some delays, and it's it's just a lot. And so that is really great, in my opinion, when you're finding like really experimental sounds and can be a good way to start figuring out like initial amp sounds that you might like. But it changes so much. If you have ever heard of the scientific method, uh, you shouldn't change a billion variables at once if you're trying to just tweak and perfect something because you don't know what made the change that you liked. And so, first of all, when I'm finding a rhythm tone, like the main guitar tone in a song, I don't want to be changing out a billion variables. I just want to be tweaking and perfecting that tone. And if I were recording the real world, I'm going to be having an amp in the room, maybe a pedal board before it, not always, but sometimes a pedal board before it, and I'm going to be focusing on getting the tone of that amp set the way that I want it to, maybe changing out the amp, changing out the cabinet, and I'm gonna be focusing on the mic and the mic placement in that on that amp, that's where you're really gonna dedicate your time and your attention. And so what I encourage you to do for at least your primary guitar tones is as opposed to just flipping through presets and just finding kind of like the one that's most interesting to you in that moment, find the amp that's most interesting to you and tweak and perfect your combination of variables there. And so that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. That said, if you just have like a lead part or something really experimental that's not the primary guitar tone in your song, or it's just an occasional little lick or something, play around with these presets because they can give you some really, really cool sounds that you might not come up with on your own. So nothing against presets, but it's more just as you're figuring out your primary tone, focusing on the right things is really important. And those come more within the actual amp plugin and figuring out which amp head, which amp cabinet, which microphone, and where things are set. That's what's really gonna drive your end result. So what I recommend you do is record a little passage of the part that you're gonna be playing in the song. So uh, if you have palm mutes and then big chords, like record a little bit of both of those, and then just have it loop like I've set up here, where I can just play this and you can just loop over and over again while I start tweaking, you know, the different variables on the amp. I can change the settings and I can just have that play and I can figure out what I like in the guitar amp setting. So that would be the first thing I would do. The second thing I do is I'd actually start on just a fresh audio track, not one of the guitar amp tracks, but just an audio track and then just put a amp designer on that. So that way you're starting totally fresh and you can get really familiar with what's going on inside the amp designer because that's really how you're gonna shape your tone. There's an EQ here, but see that nothing's actually happening on that EQ. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and make this 100%. So it's taken up basically the whole screen here. And then I'm just going to drag the same audio down to this track here and we'll just 
you this other track. So now that we have an amp set up here, we can start tweaking it and finding our right settings. And I wanna share a process with you that's the same process I would take in the real world, which is to first find the right amp, so the right general amp. And we're gonna do that right here under model. See if I change this, it's gonna change up everything here. So we're gonna start with that. Then we're going to tweak the settings on the amp, which is right up here. Then we're going to change out or play around with the amp cabinet, which is over here. We can change out just the speaker that it's coming out of. And then finally, I'll change out the microphone, play around with microphones and mic positioning, which I can tweak if you look over here, it moves where the mic is relative to the amp. Really crazy that you can do all this. This is exactly how I'd approach it in the real world. And we're just gonna try to find just our favorite version of each different option as we go through. So let's start by just going through a few of these different uh, general amp settings. And this here, the first one, this is like a Fender sound. So this is like a Fender sound, very clean. We could drive it a little bit harder. Let's flip through a few more of these. This is like a Marshall, like a modern Marshall. A vintage Marshall. I like that. There's something about that that I like. I'm not exactly sure what this is. It has a cool kind of thin sound. This is a Vox. Not right for this song. Matchstick? Someone let me know in the comments. This would be like an orange. I do like, there's something about that that I like. Let's listen to the orange amp. I like that a little bit better. Let me start to get into some wild ones. Turbo's not going to be right for this song. Retro, maybe, maybe not. Okay, I think to me the one that stood out the most is this vintage British stack. There's something I really like about that. It has a really good sound. Okay, so this is... Uh, our amp now, let's start playing with these settings up here and try to dial in a little bit of the tone a little bit closer to how we might want it. So uh, it's broken down in a few sections. You have our gain here, and then we have EQ, which is gonna be bass, mids, and treble, like a car stereo. We have a reverb, and then we have effects. We have tremolo and vibrato. Uh, those are really cool. We'll listen to them in just a second. Then you have presence, which is kind of like uh, brightness, but it's a little bit more intense. And then you have your master output here. So first, let's just try to get the amount of distortion we might want just with this gain knob here. So it's, it's pretty close already, maybe a little bit lighter, somewhere around there. I don't want it super fuzzed out, just a little bit of grit on it, a little bit more than a little. So that's working for me. And then with EQ, I'm gonna just set these all, hold the option on the keyboard and click on them, and it's gonna set them all straight up the middle. That's usually where I start out and then I add to it as I might like. So I think I might want to try a little more treble, a little more mids. I don't think I need more bass, I think that where it was. That gets a little harsh, so just a little bit of that. This is a nice little bit of body coming from the mids. So that works for me, I've got that dialed in. I don't want to have any reverb on this sound since it's a rhythm track. Sometimes I do, in this case I don't, so I'm going to turn the reverb all the way off. But you do have a lot of cool reverb sound here, and you can actually change the reverb. So it starts on a spring, um, but they have others down here, right? Pretty wild. In this case, we're just going to keep it off for now. Okay, so we've got through the reverb. Let's look at these effects here. So I'm likely not gonna use that again. This is just a straightforward rhythm track, but this is really cool if you wanna uh, really have the song kind of pulse a little bit more, like the rhythm pulse a little bit more. So you can have it set to in the time of the song. Or make it a little more subtle. Sometimes I'll put this on on palm mutes in the rhythm they're supposed to be doing to just kind of emphasize and tighten up the timing. It's pretty cool. Uh, but in this case, we don't want it on the song. So you have tremolo or vibrato over here. And then we have presence. So this is dealing with like the upper end kind of presence brightness. So if I turn it all the way off, you'll notice it gets kind of dark. So usually I'll have it all the way off and just kind of dial it in. I think somewhere around there is pretty good about how it was set. I'm gonna drive a little more gain into it. Cool, so pretty straightforward sound. Now, 
I know I like this amp head setting, but let's play around with this cabinet because you'll see we get a very big change in the sound when we change out this cabinet. So starting with this, let's go to something very different. Let's try this Tweed 110, right? <laughs> Crazy. Let's try a Black Band of Fortune. I kind of like that. Let me go back to the Vintage British. I like that. There's something in the mid-range I like a lot about that. Pay attention to the tone and how it's affecting kind of like the EQ curve of the sound. You should start with, like, before you mix anywhere, you should try to get your sound right here. And I recommend doing that before you even start recording because it's going to affect how you play. You want to have a sound that feels right to you as you're recording and play into the tone of that amp like you would in the real world. You can't change out an amp after the fact. If you totally mess it up or if you have a mix that you're not happy with, maybe play around with it then. But generally, try to get it before you even start recording and record through the amp sound that you like. Okay, let's listen to a few more here. Crazy. kind of cool too that's a little too harsh this is cool i like the original one i like this one i think i might like that one the most go back to this one and the sun's shining. yeah i think i like this one the most all right so now we have decided on our cabinet, let's look at microphones. So we have a bunch of different microphone options here. I'll pull this up a little bit so it's easier to see. So we have uh, Condenser 87. This is a really, really nice condenser mic. It's gonna be the most articulate. We have a 414. This is also a condenser mic. It's gonna be really articulate. Listen to the sound difference here. Subtle, but you can hear more top end. When I go to this one, right? Then we have uh, Dynamic 20. This one's very different. 57, Dynamic 57, 421. It's like a 57, but a little bit harsher, maybe. 609, like a 57, but a little more muted. A little more mid-range on this. And this is a ribbon mic, more low end and a little more smoother in the high end. I kind of like this 609. Eh. Now, I think I like this 87 or the 414. I think I like this 87. Okay, so we ended up where we started. Sometimes that's the best answer and that's totally fine. Okay, so the last thing to think about is your mic placement. Now, the mic placement, the closer we get to the cone, the brighter it's gonna be. As we move off the cone, the darker it's gonna be. The closer we get to the amp, the more low end and mid range we're gonna have. The further away we get, the less low end and mid range we have and kind of the brighter it will sound and feel. So listen to it as I just move this from right on the cone here, center to off axis, off to the side here. Check this out. Totally different, right? And then if we go back here, a little bit thinner back here, a little bit fuller right here, subtle, but makes a difference. And then if I go from here off to the side, right? So a big way that I might just change out a little bit of tone if I want something to cut out, cut through a little bit more, is just play around with where this mic is sitting. So, pretty common that this is a, a pretty standard starting point kind of right in the center here where we're just off access and we're up close to the amp but we're not, not right up on it or far away from it so this is a good starting point and then just think do i want it to be brighter and fuller move it closer and more towards the cone or do i want it to be uh you know a little bit thinner and darker move it maybe back over here so this is gonna be really dark this is gonna be the darkest right here And you don't need to get too technical. Just listen and then pick what you like best. I just kind of like it in the straight up middle spot right here. Yeah, feels the most balanced to me, right? 
Okay, so that's the way I would approach setting your amp in GarageBand. You can also play around. The pedal board is really, really powerful here. Uh, it has so many options. I would put it before the amp because you want to be thinking the way that you would in the real world. You'd have a pedal, you'd plug a guitar into a pedal board, pedal board into an amp, and then you'd mic up that amp. So I would go pedal board, amp designer, and then any processing after that. I never put EQs before amps or anything like that. Um, okay, and then here you just have like so many options. This is a this is my current favorite distortion in here. So if I wanted a really distorted sound, I really like grit. I've already set up in my case. I've set up my distortion on the amp already. But if you want to play around with a, a common approach is to have kind of a light amp sound and then more distortion coming from pedals, you can do that as well. Uh, and then you can play around with everything. You have so many options here, flangers, all that stuff, but don't get lost in it. Just use it for a purpose. If you want uh, to add like a delay sound, just find, you can just go up here to delay, find a delay and then try out just, you know, there's four delays here, find your favorite and use that, right? Delay's not right on the song. This grid's not really right on the song. But you can see you have so many options going on here inside the amp and the pedal board. It's amazing. So that's the way I'd approach it. First and foremost, find the amp that you like. Then find the settings on the amp that you like. Then find the cabinet that you like. Then find the mic that you like. Then find the mic position that you like. And if you do that, you can find a tone that you love. And just trust your preferences. Trust your instincts here. It doesn't matter what amp it is. It doesn't matter what microphone it is. There's nothing right or wrong. It's just what do you like? As long as it's what you like, then it's right, okay? All right, I'd love to hear from you. What is your favorite amp designer setting on the GarageBand amp designer? Let me know in the comments below. Is it a preset that you've tweaked? Is it totally original? Do you have a favorite amp cabinet or head? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear what people are liking. I like to try things out. I have a few of my favorites, but I'm always looking to play around with other things, depending on what other people like. It helps influence and inspire me, right? So let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. If you don't already have it, be sure to grab the Ultimate GarageBand Guide. We actually cover this process in that guide. It's listed out so you can quickly review it anytime you need completely free from link in the description below if this video is helpful be sure to like comment and subscribe and i'll see you tomorrow with another video